Canadian slasher films from the early 80s don't get enough love. We have some truly genre-defying hits like Black Christmas, which came out before Halloween, Prom Night, Funeral Home, and Terror Train coming out the same year as Friday the 13th, and then you have cult favorites like My Bloody Valentine and Happy Birthday to Me. But there's one Canadian slasher film that has eluded me all of these years, and that's 1983's Curtains. Now from what I hear, there's some mixed reviews about this movie, but nonetheless, I am excited to peek behind the curtain and see if this is worth a watch or not. Welcome to the Hellbound Horror Show. Curtains opens the only logical way possible, and that's with Curtains opening up, revealing a monologue by Samantha, played by Samantha Eager. As she performs, a famous director by the name of Jonathan Stryker, played by John Vernon, watches on and gives his critiques. A keen eye will notice that the fictional Jonathan Stryker actually directed this very movie. Oh boy, a fictional director directing this real life movie? That's never a good sign. There's a big story that I can go into, but I'll save that for the end of this review. Before we even realize it, Stryker takes Samantha to a mental institution. She has an outburst and is quickly put in a straight jacket. It actually turns out that Stryker and Samantha want this to happen. You see, Stryker's about to make a big motion picture titled Audra, and Samantha's gonna play the lead. Since Samantha is a method actress, she wants to go into a mental hospital and observe before she tackles the role of Audra. Yeah, it's as incredibly stupid as it sounds. In the hospital, we get the stereotypical 80s incredibly insensitive depictions of mental health. I get it, it's a product of its time, but it's still tasteless. In the hospital, Samantha slowly begins to lose her mind, and when Stryker visits, he feels that she's slipping away. Well, Stryker wants to find a new lead for his film, so he picks out six girls to audition, and not just any kind of audition, but instead spend a few days in his isolated mansion to try out for his film, Hunger Game Style. We meet all six girls, either talking to their agent or boyfriends or friends. My favorite is Patty, played by Lynn Griffin. She's a stand-up comedian, and all she wants in the world is to be an actress. She's hilarious, and I love every scene that she's in. I screwed a guy from Photomat. <laughs> you know when they say in and out in 24 hours? He was in and out in 24 seconds. While we are introduced to all the girls, we also find out that Samantha has escaped the mental institution, and she isn't very happy that Stryker is going to replace her. Not all the girls make it to the mansion either. One of them is killed by a person dressed in an old lady mask. That mask is brilliant. It's so creepy. And I approve. Well, the remaining five girls actually make it to the mansion, and they all sit around a table saying what they would be willing to do in order to get this huge role. Oh, uh, tell a few jokes, do a little song and dance, sell my mother into slavery. <laughs> Go down on it. <laughs> and in walks Stryker. He talks for a bit before Samantha crashes the party. She believes it's her part to lose, so now she's in the competition as well. Stryker is an odd director. He pushes people to their limits and he tries to break them to get what he wants on film. He also tends to sleep with the different actresses and based on their reactions, I would say he's a bit of a manipulative jerk to say the very least. Well, the girls start getting picked off one by one by someone wearing an old woman's mask. Who's behind the killings? Who will survive? And who will get the part of their dreams? Now, what can I even say about curtains? The pacing is inconsistent. The style is not cohesive. The story only makes sense if you don't think about it. The ending is abrupt and it doesn't make much sense. There isn't much of a resolution and there's no main character to really root for. As a whole, Curtains is a mess of a film, but, but it does have its moments. There was so much potential with Curtains. The mask is creepy and honestly, it's one of the best slasher masks around. Acting is top-notch for a cheap 80s slasher film, and the characters are mostly well-written. 
Not all six of the girls are fleshed out, but there's enough of them with personality for you to care. The music is solid, cinematography some of the times is tight, fresh, and beautiful. And I actually like most of the setup. I think having six girls trying out for the role of a lifetime with this avant-garde director who has an Icarus complex is a really fun setup. It's a good setting for a mindless slasher film, and Curtain stays relatively classy while indulging in the genre's tropes. Yes, there's nudity and death, but there's a very professional and elegant feel to the film. Scenes are designed to let the audience breathe. There isn't a lot of blood and gore, and I'm okay with that. There's just enough to know what kind of movie this is, but this isn't a Tom Savini splatter flick by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Curtains is a very uneven film. There are moments that work and work really, really well, but other moments that drag and bring the film to a screeching halt. The film is just a hair under an hour and a half, but it feels so much longer. Part of the pacing problems is because director Richard Kyupka was fired about halfway through productions. This was Kyupka's directorial debut for a feature film, but he did have experience going in. He was a DP on many films for the better part of a decade. He was an up-and-coming star in the industry, but he was meticulous and slow. He always wanted that perfect shot. He was making a tense and slow thriller, but the producer wanted a fast and mindless slasher. So Kipka was let go. The producer shot the first bit of the movie and the ending chase scene nearly two years after initial filming. In total, the producer filmed about half of the movie. Neither of them took credit for their work, so the fictional director, Stryker, got all the credit. I know Curtains isn't perfect and that the problems during production definitely impacted the final result, but I still enjoyed my time with it. The problems are glaring, but the good really shines through. I enjoyed the intentionally slow bits. I liked the characters and the plot. I would have been fine with a bit more gore and I wish the film stuck its landing, but overall, this isn't a bad slasher film. If you've already seen all the popular stuff and you can't get enough of that 80s slasher gold, then you really can't go wrong with curtains. And that's all I have for tonight. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe. Take care, everyone.